This is going to be a study on the Bible saves marriages. If we go to the Bible, then we can learn some things about how to treat our husband or our wife. And a big problem in marriage today is when the husband and wife lust after other people. So number one, keep your lust under control. Matthew 5.28 says, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. A man will stay attracted to his wife if he will keep his eyes off of everyone else's wife. Proverbs 27.20 says, The eyes of men are never satisfied, and men have a problem looking at other women. Women can help another married couple when they don't dress like a whore. Put yourself in another married woman's position for a moment. Would you want her to walk around dressed in clothes that a whore would wear? And possibly cause your husband to commit adultery in his heart because she's dressed that way? In 2018, women aren't dressing in modest apparel as the Bible commands them to in First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. And for this reason, men are constantly being under satanic attack through lustful thoughts. And when the man feeds into these thoughts, it can leave him having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, as the Bible talks about in Second Peter 2.14. But if you look in Job 31 and verse 1, it says, I have made a covenant with mine eyes that I think upon a maid. You need to make a covenant with your eyes. Determine that you aren't going to look at other women. Decide that you are only going to put all your thoughts toward only one woman, your wife. And remember that the wicked woman who flirts with you at work is doing the work of Satan. She may be pretty on the outside, but if she isn't saved, then she is dead inside. And if you had spiritual eyes, then you would see her not as beautiful, but as something like the crypt keeper because she's dead inside uh, proverbs 5 3 through 5 says for the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil but her end is bitter as wormwood sharp as a two-edged sword her feet go down to death her steps take hold on hell proverbs 7 9 through 27 talks more about this wicked woman. It says, In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot, that's the clothes that a whore wears, and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. She caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have all peace offerings with me. The day, this day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. And I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us sauce ourselves with loves, for the goodman is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till the dart strike through his liver. As a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. So that's talking about the wicked woman that tempts you to fornicate, cheat on your wife. It says her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. 
the women who tempt you to lust and commit adultery are devil possessed. A woman who dresses half naked is led by the devil when she picks her outfit. The devil possessed men in the Gospels wore no clothes during the time he was possessed. And after Jesus cast the devils out of his body, the Bible says he was clothed and in his right mind. So there you have a connection between nakedness and devil possession. Ladies can help their husbands, their own husbands, by dressing like a lady instead of like a harlot. It causes other men to flirt with you when you dress so immodestly. Who wants their wife going to work to be flirted with by a bunch of natural brute beasts, as the Bible would call them, who have eyes full of adultery? Women also have a problem with lusting after other men. For some unknown reason, couples think it is okay to lust after other people as long as the person they're lusting, af lusting after is a, like a celebrity. But what makes you think it is okay to have a Fifty Shades of Grey or Magic Mike DVD or poster? What makes you think it is okay to watch wicked movies? For your mind to lust, it needs images inside of it to lust after. Why would a married woman... Put a Man Crush Monday picture on her social media that isn't her husband. It is wrong to lust after other men, even if they are a celebrity. And that goes for the men who put Woman Crush Wednesday on their social media when they're married. That's pathetic. Something else that will help your marriage is if you will quit referring to other people as hot in front of your spouse. That is disrespectful and shows a lack of faithfulness in your thought life. It also shows you have failed to grow up in many ways. If you think another person is attractive, then keep it to yourself and don't let your mind wander off on things and be in lust. And I've seen men with pornography on their iPhone wallpaper and their wife sees it. And that is an outright disgrace and that's not going to help your marriage. A lot of problems will be solved if you quit lusting after other people and come together like a husband and wife are supposed to do. God's purpose of you getting married was to put an end to your sexual sin, and when you lust after other women constantly, it will show in your marriage. Your wife is going to be neglected and feel like you don't love her. 1 Corinthians 7, 2-5 through 5 says, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power over of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. So to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. But it, some married couples aren't using each other what they're supposed to be using them for. And they're getting tempted by the devil and they're lusting after everyone else instead of being attracted to their husband or wife. And the next point I'd like to make is husbands love your wives. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Colossians 3.19, Husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them. How much do you need to love her? You need to love her enough to die for her. Jesus Christ died to get his bride, which is made up of all born-again believers. We should follow his example and love our wives so much we would be willing to die for them if we had to. And if your wife doesn't love you, then you should show your love towards her. And this will make her love you back. If we again compare Jesus and the bride to husband and wife, we can see this will work. First John 4.19 says we love him because he first loved us. If you start loving your wife like you should, then she will start loving you like she should. Titus 2.4 talks about how women have to be taught to love their own husbands. 
This can be done by showing her love yourself. And if a man loves his wife, then he will provide for his wife. A man who won't support his wife doesn't love her like he should. First Timothy 5, 8 says, But if any man provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. Another thing a man will do if he loves his wife is praise and compliment her. Proverbs thirty one twenty eight says, Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. If your wife is a good wife and does what she should, then you should thank her for it. I've heard men call their wives fat and ugly and nasty and just tear their wives apart, and this is wicked and shows no love. A man who does these things like this and beats his wife is a sorry excuse for a husband. The common man wouldn't hurt himself intentionally, so he shouldn't hurt his wife. She is one flesh with you. Ephesians five twenty-eight through 29 says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. And next, wives should submit themselves to their own husbands. Ephesians five twenty two through 24 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. For many women... These are the hardest verses in Scripture to live by. If a wife wants a good relationship with her husband, then she will need to submit to his authority. Genesis 3.16 says, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. If a man loves his wife like Christ loved the church, and if he's staying in the book, then a woman should have no problem submitting to what he says. You should, The woman should, should submit out of love for her husband and out of love for God. When you rebel, you're not only going against your husband, you're going against God himself. If your husband has to make you submit, then you're not really submitting. In many marriages, the husband can't do anything with his wife because she has a rebellious attitude and an independent spirit. Many times a wife will want her husband to get saved just because he will treat her better, yet when he gets saved and decides he wants to live for God, she will stand in his way. He wants to spend time doing something for God. His wife has other plans for him, and the devil can use a woman to keep a man busy with the things of the world. He can be so wrapped up in trying to please his wife and completing a list she has written out for him to complete that he doesn't have any time to read the Bible or do anything for God. We are living in a time when women feel entitled and they feel like they are princesses. And this is Hollywood brainwash. All of the movies, in all the movies you have a man that has to do some big heroic act to get the girl. And this makes the young girl grow up feeling like she is some type of prom queen who needs worship from her husband. And when she doesn't get this worship, she will begin looking for it from someone else. And when mothers downgrade and mock their husband in front of their daughter, it will lead to history repeating itself. The daughter will treat her husband the same way when she doesn't get her way. And I believe men are pushed even harder to cheat on their wife because she treats him like an idiot. Notice in that verse we read earlier in Proverbs, it says that the woman gets the man with flattering lips. The man gets yelled at at home, and then he goes to work, and some girl flatters him. It ends with him cheating on his wife. Wives many times have the question, am I supposed to be in subjection to my unsaved husband? And the answer is yes. If you will submit to him and be what a wife should be, then he is more likely to come to God. He will see the hidden man of the heart, which is Jesus Christ, who lives inside you when you got born again. 
And this doesn't mean you follow his command. If your husband tells you to do something wrong, you don't need to break God's command. But you need to keep following God's command. But for the most part, you need to follow what he says. 1 Peter 3, 1 through 7 says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So a wife's manner of life, living a godly life in front of her husband, can bring her husband to Christ eventually. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on an, of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. So it says a holy woman who trusts in God will be in subjection to her own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. When a man isn't getting along with his wife, it hinders his prayers. And women think they can be treated like sl they will be treated like slaves if they obey the Bible's command of being in subjection to their husband. And this isn't true. The Bible says for the man to love, honor, and cherish his wife. If he does these things, then any decision he makes will be in the best interest of the wife. If a man seeks God, then he will give the man the wisdom to lead the marriage. A Bible-believing husband who wants to follow the Bible will honor his wife and realize he has found a good thing. Proverbs 18.22 says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. If a man loves her husband like she should, then she will submit. 1 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Ephesians 5.33 says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Sadly, many Christian women don't reverence their husband. They will talk to him like he's stupid. If he tries to rule the house, she rebels. It is impossible for a man to rule this house if his wife won't submit. And you hear a lot of overly macho preachers saying a man has to make his wife submit. But if he has to make her submit out of fear, then he really doesn't have control. First Peter 3, 4 says, But let the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Notice the verse said, a meek and quiet spirit. Many women today are loud and obnoxious. They will yell at their husbands and talk to him like he is their son. Proverbs says in 1933, or in Proverbs 1913, A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dripping. Proverbs 27.15, A continual dropping in a very rainy day, in a contentious woman or alike. It is hard to live with a cranky, complaining, nagging, ridiculing, mocking rebel of a wife. If a wife will, will respect and submit to her husband, and a husband will love, honor, and cherish his wife, then you will have a good marriage, and both people have to come together and decide to do better for a marriage to be a mutual good marriage. But this has been how to have a better marriage. Maybe you can take these things and apply them to your marriage. Have your spouse listen to it. And if you do what the Bible says, then you're going to have a lot better marriage.